We're going to want to zoom out so that people can see the full nastiness of this console. Not that much back. Buenos nachos and welcome back to the channel. On today's episode, we're going to be working on this old time NES console right here. One of Nintendo's better revisions, the one missing the AV port. Granted, it was only mono audio that we got out of this thing. It's still a significant loss when you're losing out on AV and going to uh, RF out. Wonder whose idea that was to do a downgrade on a uh, final revision of the console, huh? Anyway, we're gonna be recapping old Smokey right here. It is looking definitely quite smoky indeed. Like, take a look at this thing. You can see the nicotine juice just settled right into the crevices of all the letters right here. Yeah, definitely gonna need some cleaning. Without further ado, let's make sure it works before we start actually working on the thing. Let's get our power cable right here. And that's gonna be for the TV, it's not for the Nintendo. I hope you weren't thinking that's what it was for. You did turn on, right? There we go. And power for old Smokey over here. Uh, let's see. We're gonna randomly decide which game we are selecting here. Uh... This is Tetris, right? It is. I got it right. That means you have to give me a subscribe and a thumbs up. Is it on the wrong channel? Yes. But does sound work? In addition, does the controller port work? Because that's what we're testing as well. What happened there? Huh. Thought maybe there might have been a loose power adapter port. Yeah, I'd say that the audio works and obviously the picture. Let's go ahead and progress. We're gonna save this console from a corrosive death by preemptively replacing the capacitors, unless of course they're leaking, in which case we desperately need to perform some life-saving surgery. And of course we'll be using this toolkit right here, which contains just about everything you need to open up almost every single console nowadays. It'll handle 99% of scenarios. And of course you can use it to fix your computer, open that up as well it does have the adjustable corner thingamajig right here. Uh, we're gonna need the Nintendo bit, which I believe was the larger one right here. And this thing is not very difficult to open up. It's like some of these screws are loose. Hmm. Did I perhaps leave this thing open? Or was it that way when I bought it? Tune in at 11 and find out. All right, so I want to go ahead and keep these screws off to the side over here. You can't see it, but I assure you it's off to the side, unless you use that view. Now to find out how horrifically nasty it is inside of here. I mean, if this is in the indicator of how bad it is. All right, there we are. Try not to zoom in too much now, because then you won't actually be able to see anything. But the microscope will show us. It's like, dang, dude, you're violent with that thing. And there would be a nicotine dust ball. There's definitely a bunch of nicotine infused dust in here. This console needs some TLC for dang sure. But are the capacitors leaking? We're getting closer. And I can't tell because they're all under a metal shield. So let's go ahead and switch this bit over to a Philips. I believe we need a, so this is a PH3. It probably needs a PH4. Of course, we're gonna undo the cartridge slot screws first. All right, so we'll use a, I guess it's marked as J1, and that seems to be a bit bigger. So let's go ahead and lift this up. And there we are. It's about the only part of the console that appears to be clean. Kind of makes me wonder if the cartridge port is in good shape or not. Let's, uh, let's take a look here real quick. Looks like nothing, a little can of deoxid, and of course some alcohol and some can of air we'll take care of. There's a couple fibers and stuff in there, but I wouldn't put any brushes or anything inside so you damage the alignment of these gold fins. And we'll be taking off this heat sink. And that's just two more screws in addition to the screw that holds the voltage regulator in place. That's right in there. So the capacitors look like they're in decent shape. I don't see any leaking. But being that this console claims that it was manufactured in 1993, I think it's safe to say it's time to replace the capacitors. That's what, 800 years? Man, I can only imagine like some of the other boards that actually get like full-time use, like these capacitors would just be oozing all over the place. So we're gonna wanna replace these capacitors. And of course now I have to go and hunt down some capacitors. Now that we have our supplies, we can continue. So that's gonna be the NES top loader cap kit from console five. 
This console doesn't really require too much, thankfully. It's one of the easier consoles to replace the caps in. We have the Steri Flux right here, the V3TF in case we need it. I guess we can begin by replacing this ginormo capacitor right here. So that'll be our guy right there. I'm currently using 350C for using the Hakko FX-951, which of course is now discontinued by Hakko, which is unfortunate. I guess we'll go ahead and have to purchase one of their fancier soldering irons at a later date and try that out. All right, so one leg at a time. Come on out of there. All right, there we go. Well, it does not smell fish-elated, so that means that it wasn't leaking. But what's the capacitance on this thing? All right, so let's see if this capacitor is having problems or not. Why is this thing out of focus? Remember, this is supposed to be a 1500 UF. The ESR is 0.16 ohms, and of course the capacitance is 1576. So this capacitor is still good 30 plus years later. Probably shouldn't, but let's go ahead and test the new capacitor to see what the value is on it. ESR is 0 0.06, capacitance is 1558. So the ESR is definitely doing better. Uh, we're first gonna need to remove the residual solder from the solder hole. So you can't get the new capacitor in there. Now it doesn't look like a capacitor would make it through here, so we're gonna use our dental pick tool. And there you go. And of course you can pick this tool up on Amazon or AliExpress. They're not that expensive. And of course we're gonna to wanna to match up the polarity on this thing. Nintendo does give you clues. Take a look, positive is on the right-hand side and negative is on, of course, the left-hand side. Probably should have replaced the tiny capacitor right next to it first, because that's probably not gonna be very easy to get out of there. But we enjoy the challenge, so we'll go ahead and do that next. And that would be this guy right here. All right, came right out. You can see it right there. What is that, a 1UF 50 volt? Is that what it says? Yes, sir, 1UF. 50 volt. What is our ESR reading on this? 0 0.88 UF, 2.4 ohms for the ESR. So it's a little bit lower than what it should be, so it is out of spec. And we needed a 1 UF 50 voltage. Gonna need to clean up that hole first. Man, that is just not happening for that hole right there. I don't want to use more heat. I don't want to raise the temperature on the soldering iron. The dental tool works wonders. So if you take a look, it looks like negative is on the bottom and positive is on the top. And that was a 1UF 50 volt. Set the bad one to the side, that way we don't confuse things. It's a good fit. We're not gonna solder up anything yet. We're gonna progress with the remaining capacitors here, of which it looks like there are three more. Though I'm not seeing the third one, unless I'm going blind here. Ah, oh, there it is. I guess I am going blind. Yeah, so we have three right here. All right, so the next one is, of course, gonna be on this side right here, which according to the board is a 6.3 volt 100 UF. Okay, so we'll begin by removing this one then. About ready to say is the uh, soldering iron not working because it's not pulling that leg through. Yeah, the leg fell off. Won't be able to do any more ESR testing. Granted, I forgot to test the new capacitor. Did I? I don't remember. We won't be able to do any more ESR testing. So you can blame this capacitor for what happened. Of course, now I have to find a way to get this leg out of the hole. This will just add some more solder because when in doubt, add more solder. Did we get it? No. I guess we're gonna need some tweezers. Did it fall through? I think so. I mean, kinda. You can see it right over here in this blurry mess. I guess we can desolder from the top real quick. All right, that's that leg. All right, I think we're okay. We can begin the desoldering process. Man, it just refuses to clear. There's another tool I can use besides this, but 
I guess we have no choice. A viewer of the channel had recommended using a mini drill. I had had one in my possession for quite some time and never really thought about using it to clear the holes. But if you have a small enough drill bit, you can do so and you can do it safely. I don't know how much of a view you guys and gals will have. And it just goes through like that. And you minimize the chance of using too much heat and damaging the area. However, look at the mess it makes. You definitely want to clean off everything or you're going to have some shorts. So for now, I'm going to brush that away. Let's go ahead and put our capacitor through. So we'll just make sure that we have a 6.3 100 and that's what this is. So let's go ahead and install that. And you'll note that it says positive is on this side and negative is on this side. And whenever it decides to get in there. Now you'll also note that the positive has a longer lead than the negative. So that's also one indicator to help you when you're placing these capacitors. All right, let's progress to the next one. We have two more to go. So we'll go ahead and take out this one right here, which is a 51 UF. At least that's what it looks like. All right, it came right through. Use some desoldering wick. All right, so those look clean enough to stick the capacitor through. And it did say that it's a 50 volt, one UF. And we have one final one to pull out, which is next to the power switch right here. And of course, this is your 0.47. I guess they didn't have enough space to put the voltage or I'm just not seeing it. And there we go. Eh, let's go ahead and just drill it out. And if you want to make it a little bit easier, you can, of course, desolder the shavings. There we go. Brush those away in case they floated around the board. We don't want any shorts. All right, and let's put that final capacitor in. And positive is on the top, negative on the bottom. All right, now we can begin our soldering process. We'll start with the ones over here at the top. And we'll, of course, be using some SN63PB37 solder also known as leaded solder. Is that a crack solder joint beginning right there on that regulator? Oh. Strange. All right, you can resume. We have that one down here at the bottom. And we have one final one to solder over here. All right, now it's time to cut these leads. You, of course, want to be careful and not apply too much pressure because you can rip the pad. And of course, if your cutters are too sharp, you can accidentally cut a trace that's nearby. Of course, these cutters, they're pretty much at the end of their rope because the tip of them doesn't really cut all that well, but that works out for our purposes. We finished the recapping portion. Now we'll go ahead and clean up our work. So I'm gonna just spray it down with some alcohol and we'll use a toothbrush. And I recommend brushing over the whole board just in case you have some stray solder. Plus in this case, the board does need a cleaning. Granted, it probably needs a better cleaning than just a brush over. It's gonna take a lot more than this alcohol to take care of that uh, nicotine juice. All right, so I think we're good to go. One thing I would recommend you do is you check over your work, make sure all of your capacitors are in the correct polarity. Let's go ahead and put this back into the console next to the nicotine ball. I'm going to power this on without the heat sink, but I'm gonna do it quickly and not leave it on for too long. Of course, the younger people that are watching this are like, TVs used to make that noise. Yeah, before we switched over to the digital tuners. All right, so we have our Tetris in there now. And I guess we're not on the right channel. Right, we weren't on the right channel. We amazingly enough did not need to use any of this flux, which is a good thing. I've already messed up.
You try playing Tetris when you're on this side of the screen. All right, well. <laughs> If you'd like us to perform a recapping on your console, you can always check out our contact form, which is down in the description below. If you found this video helpful or useful, please remember to leave us a like and subscribe, and thanks for watching. Until next time.